I'm going to introduce this problem on how to design an artificial pancreas. We're going to do this for a process control exercise. And the very first thing that you want to look at whenever you're designing a process controller is if we have the three essential elements for closed loop or automation, we have the actuator. So recently developed, uh, we have this insulin pump that can inject insulin into a person's body automatically. Right now, a lot of them are manual, meaning that the user sets either the rate, the trickle rate, the base rate, or gives themselves uh, maybe a faster injection uh, right before a meal. There's an also another technology that has been developed recently, and that's the sensors, the blood glucose sensors that sit right on the arm and uh, can take uh, this automatic uh, glucose measurement. And so we have a sensor as well, a sensor of the uh, blood glucose in real time. And then the very third, uh, the third thing, the final thing that we need is a controller and that will put together the sensor and also the actuator and be able to give fine-tuned adjustments to the blood uh, to be able to maintain a blood glucose level. So let's just go over some Center for Disease Control diabetes statistics. We have age group of diabetes. It affects uh, by and large uh, greater than 65, but there's also a growing group in this region. And we also see that uh, we have a larger number of 45 to 64 uh, even though the percentage is, is less, uh, we have a larger group, and so that means there's more people that are affected by it. Okay, and then we have type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 is also called juvenile uh, diabetes, and it uh, basically is the inability of the body to produce insulin. And so type 1 diabetics are born that way. I think it's about 5% uh, of, of diabetics are type 1. And uh, the rest are type 2. So due to um, other factors, the type 2 diabetic uh, will develop diabetes and uh, over time. And so we want to design for this case study, we're actually going to design it for the type 1 uh, diabetic. So just a little bit more on the statistics, um, how bad of a problem this is. But let's show this graphically. This is 2004 for CDC statistics. Now you can see that the Dark regions are those that have greater than 10.6% uh, affected by diabetes. And so you can see some areas right here, especially in the south, and uh, some other localized areas um, you know, throughout the nation. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and advance this one year at a time. And so we, we've seen this develop over time. Now it's 2017. And the problem is continuing to worsen. But let's just see what it is in 2005. You can see a little bit more fill in there. This is a percentage in more counties goes above 10.6. And there's 2006, 2007, and then 2008. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewind that again. Uh, there's 2004, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, we can see that it is a growing problem. Maybe better due to better diagnostics, um, knowing, you know, if somebody's, you know, somebody's coming in and getting tested to see if they have diabetes, but also uh, health and lifestyle uh, are, are not contributing in positive ways to that trend. Okay, so the cost of this, um, you know, 26 million Americans, uh, 79, with pre -di 79 million with pre-diabetes, and then we'll have 33% by 2050 if the trend continues. And there's just some estimates of the total direct and indirect and direct medical costs and indirect costs uh, just due to other factors associated with it. So it's a big problem. There's uh, a lot at stake there. And so we want to try to design an artificial pancreas to be able to help uh, those that have uh, type 1, now that's those that are born with uh, you know, this inability to produce insulin. Okay, the very first thing we're going to do is develop a model of a person's body. There are a number of good models out there in the literature. Uh, we're just going to use a very simple one here. Um, and we're going to step up the insulin injection rate from uh, 3 microunits per minute up to 4. 
Okay, and when we do that, then we're going to see a drop in the milligrams per deciliter. Um, we're going to see a drop from just kind of a nominal value. It's going to drop because I have the insulin increasing. Okay, and then we also have uh, the other way, uh, which is we drop the insulin rate. And then we're going to see a corresponding rise in the blood glucose level. So this is no other disturbances, no meals, nothing else affecting uh, the person in this case, except for the change in insulin injection. So we need this type of model here to be able to come up with an initial surrogate model. We're going to do an FOPDT model, a first order plus dead time approximation. And... Um, Okay, so let's just go ahead and do it for this one. I have a delta, delta u equals negative one. And this one is uh, my delta y, my output. And that is going to be equal to, oh, let me go back. Uh, that's gonna be equal to about 35. Okay, so my gain is going to be about negative 35 because my gain is uh, delta y divided by delta u and so then my time constant is how long it takes to get 63 percent of the way there I don't really have much of a dead time maybe uh, just a little bit of dead time I'm just gonna assume that's almost zero and then uh, to get 63 percent of the way there it takes about um, two hours so my time constant is about two hours. Okay, so there I have it, negative 35 for the gain and about two hours for the time constant. Uh, we can also use optimization to fit this model. Uh, this is what we're going to need to come up with an initial PID tuning parameters for this individual. Okay, and if we also use something called uh, dynamic optimization, we can also optimize uh, the insulin injection rate over the course of 24 hours to keep uh, a patient into a kind of a normal operating mode. Uh, instead of trying to reach a set point, we might be uh, trying to emulate a healthy person instead. So the purpose of this assignment, though, we're not going to do the advanced stuff right now. This is just to come up with uh, a PID controller that can be used as this artificial pancreas. The brain in the artificial pancreas that will tell the insulin pump how much to inject and when to inject it. And we assume that we have continuous blood glucose measurements that are coming into this controller. Okay, so uh, we're going to first of all obtain FOPDT parameters. Uh, we just looked at that with just this with the step response. And then we want to obtain PID tuning parameters, uh, in this case ITAE disturbance rejection and set point tracking as well. So come up with uh, some tuning values and then you're going to implement that. And then we'll simulate uh, the closed loop response and then tune the controller. And then I'm also interested in any other ideas that you might have as well as you uh, develop this controller. What are some things that um, you know you would need to uh, watch out for. Um, how could you use user input, the, pay, the person who has this artificial pancreas installed, maybe they know that a meal is coming in 10 minutes and so you could tell the controller that. How would you use that information in your controller design? So all of these things are, are things to think about. I'm just going to go, um, let's go ahead and just exit out of this and I'll just bring you to the um, this is going to be on the course website, okay, and this is going to be PDC. All right, and then I'm going to come down here to assignments and um, down here to the type 1 diabetic blood glucose. This is the one we're working with today, and there's a little bit more information on this, um, and you also see some simulation code. Um, so go ahead and start by just selecting this and um, come down here to the very bottom and select the git code. That'll give you a text version of it and then you can start with that. Okay, I've got a copy right here. 
Okay, now I'm going to run it and we'll just see the, the uh, response over the course of the day. In this case, we have it animating. So we can see I, I set the animate flag to true. And so you can use that script um, either in an animation mode or you can have it just calculate as fast as it can and then plot the result. So what we'll see is, um, you know, the insulin, I'm just going to keep it at, uh, at a level of uh, 31 microunits per uh, liter. And, uh, you know, sorry, the uh, injection rate at 2.8, um, you can see the insulin concentration in the person's body. There you can see the first uh, meal of the day, the breakfast. Uh, so that was a disturbance that came in. We want to try to keep the, uh, you know, within these limits that are there in the dashed line. And then you can see the lunch. Now this is if you just didn't kept that insulin injection rate constant throughout the day at 2.8 uh, micro units per minute. Okay, and uh, there you can see the lunch disturbance as well. And then it's gonna come on and uh, you might have a larger dinner, for example. Uh, so each time it's, it's uh, going outside of those limits. And then you can see the dinner as well. Okay, so there's the dinner, the bump in the blood glucose level due to dinner. And then you can see it, um, you know, finish off here with the 24 hours of the day. Okay, so it's gonna finish here and then, um, Okay, there's the uh, simulation. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna design a PID controller that's going to change this insulin injection rate. I just gave it a step down, but you're gonna actually uh, implement that in this problem. Take this example starting code and implement a PID controller and see how well you can do trying to keep it within this limit and at a target of 80 millimoles per liter.